Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, dear brothers and sisters everywhere and anywhere, we'll start in, uh, in two minutes, inshallah. And uh, I hope that you are uh, safe and tranquil wherever you are, whenever you are in the north, the south, east, or the west, uh, wherever you are, inshallah, in this very difficult time and difficult challenge. As we know that the whole world is actually being made scared of uh, COVID, a virus is uh, locking us inside our dormitory, our bedroom, our houses, our flats, can't even go outside sometimes to do shopping or to visit our relatives or to visit our friends. And as our brothers and sisters, Christian brothers and sisters, even they cannot actually make the mass congregation that they used to do in the good old days from last year on in the past. And this is because of the small virus, which nobody uh, knows its impact on our life, yet it has been crippling our life for the last 10 months or more. And we hope that next year we'll see a different year of prosperity and peace and joy uh, to all of us, inshallah. And uh, now we we'll start, inshallah. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone. And uh, peace and blessing be upon you. As you know from yesterday talk, uh, the same title will be today in English. We delivered it yesterday uh, regarding uh, the celebration of uh, the birthday of Jesus. Peace be upon him and Lady Mary and the family of Al Imran. Today we'll talk about the same again, actually, for all of us because uh, sometimes create, create, creating debates amongst the Muslims, especially the Muslims either living in the West or living in the East. But anyway, let us start, inshallah, and look at the index of our talk today. You can bear with me because there's a lot of ayah from the Quran and a lot of uh, explanation about the status of Jesus السلام, in Islam. Uh, this is the index uh, of the talk, 12 points, introduction, who is Jesus and uh, the son of Lady Mary, Mary the Virgin, uh, salam. who is Lady Mary the Virgin, salam. and who is the mother of Lady Mary the Virgin, salam. and uh, what is the message of Jesus, Isa ibn Maryam, salam. Uh, what is the relationship between the message of Jesus and other messages delivered by different prophets? Uh, can we follow the message of Jesus, son of Lady Mary, alayhim salam, peace be upon both of them? Can we celebrate the birthday of Jesus on 25th of December or the 7th of January, uh, alayhim salam? Uh, what does celebration, when does celebration become forbidden? And number 10, uh, who are the prophets that Prophet Muhammad met when he was going to Mi'raj, the ascension to heaven? And uh, how to celebrate the birth of Jesus and other uh, prophets and other uh, holy uh, messages and messengers, alayhim salam, and the conclusion at the end. So let us start actually by point number one, which is the introduction. Big question, which is, is the celebration, is celebration of religious festivities allowed or not? A big debate amongst Muslim scholars. Two camps. I'm not going to go into details of this. There are two camps. One camp said, no, no way. It's a no-go area. Okay. Another camp said, yes. So between the two opinions, that all, both camps are actually supported by evidence from the history of Islam and from the traditional of the Hadith and the Seerah of the Prophet But anyway, in my own view, which I'm not a religious scholar, 
I'm a social worker. I will allow it to happen on one condition. If it will highlight the moral values of the teachings of the religion, undermine people of their own of mod, of their own models who gave their life to spread the message of such religion. I said again, I myself, my opinion will allow it if this will highlight the moral values of the teachings of the religion, okay, the religion itself, and remind people of the role models. Because nowadays there are too many role models. Too many role models. We don't know where they come from. And who is making them role models? Uh, uh, and remind people of the role models who gave their life to spread the message of such religion. This is actually my own opinion, supported by many ulama, actually, who allow the celebration of the birth or the religious festivity, the public religious festivities. Let us talk about point number two. Who is Jesus, alayhi salam? Sayyidina Isa, alayhi salam. Who is he? Who is he? In Islam, he is a very major and prominent figure. He is a prominent figure in Islam. He is considered to be a messenger of God, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is the Messiah. The Messiah from the Arabic word is Messiah. And Messiah is the one who is the sweeper. The sweeper who was sweeping the land to spread his message, actually, and to guide the lost children of the Israelites. He was sent to guide the lost children of Israel, Bani Israel, and his, and his new scripture was actually the gospel, which call it the Bible, the Bible. Believing in Jesus, alayhi salam, Sayyidina Isa, alayhi salam, and other prophets is a cornerstone of Islam. It's a part of our belief. We cannot be Muslims unless we believe in all the prophets of Allah, including Jesus and other prophets, alayhi salam, ajma'in. Uh, the Quran mentioned Jesus 25 times. More and more and more than Muhammad has been mentioned, alayhi salam, sallallahu alayhi salam, ajma'in. And the emphasis is Quran that Jesus was mortal human who is like any other prophet of Allah SWT, like Adam, like Abraham, like Joseph, like John, like Noah, like all of them. All of them. Uh, okay? Alayhi uh, salam, Ajma'in. Allah gave a description, very simple description of who is Jesus. And they said in Surah Al-Imran, Al-Imran, not Ali Imran, yani Al-Imran, the family of Imran, 59, he said, indeed, the example of Jesus to Allah is like the example of Adam. Adam, Allah, created him from clay. And he told him, be, and he became Adam. As simple as that. Jesus was created from no father, it's only from mother. And blow the spirit or the soul of Allah in the womb of Lady Mary, the virgin, may, may peace and blessing of Allah be upon her, and told the spirit to become be, be Jesus, and it became Jesus. In the Matthew Isa and Allah, Kamathi Adam, Halakam and Robin, Tumakala, Kun Fayakun. Also, uh, when the discussion happened after Lady Mary had a baby and the people were a little bit ashamed of the incident and came to talk to her, she told them, to talk to him. Uh, he told her, how can we speak to this in, in, in this fetus or this, this, this actually little baby in the, in the cradle? He wrote to them, spoke to them. He made, he said that Allah has made me blessed, blessed, wherever I am, and has enjoined me upon and joined and has enjoined upon me prayer and zakah as long as I remain alive. And made me dutiful, yani responsible for my mother and respectable to my mother. Not to be uh, uh, wretched, wretched tyrant to my mother. 
والسلام علي يا مولد ويا مأموت ويا مقبض حياة and peace is on my on me the day I was born the day I will die and the day I am raised alive again this is the discussion this is what Jesus mentioned about himself that is Jesus ذلك عيسى ابن مريم قول حق this is or that is Jesus the son of Mary the word of truth about which they are in dispute. They are still in dispute about Jesus, alayhi salam. Okay, about Isa, alayhi salam. Then Isa ibn Maryam called Haq, alayhi fiyam tarun. Also, he talked about himself by saying, وَرَسُولًا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَيْلِ And may Allah make me a messenger to the children of Israel. And they will say to them, قد جئتكم بأن أني قد جئتكم بآية من ربكم. I I indeed I have come to you with a sign. With a sign from your Lord. I Jesus عليه السلام come to you from a sign from your Lord. With a sign from Lord. In that I design for you from a clay. That which is like the form of a bird. And from the clay, I make a form of a bird. Then I breathe into it. Then it becomes a bird by permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And I cure the blind from birth. Not actually the one who is blind from birth. And the leper, the one who is suffering from leprosy. And I give life to the dead by the permission of Allah. And I inform you of what you eat and what you store in your houses. Indeed, in that is a sign for you. All these are signs of power has been given to Jesus from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sign for you if you are believers. And they have come confirming what was before me. I was confirming what was before me of Torah, the book of Moses, alayhi salam. To make for you the lawful, to make the lawful, to make lawful for you some of what was forbidden to you. To make lawful for you some what was forbidden for you before. And they have come to you with a sign from your Lord, with a sign from your Lord. So fear Allah and obey me as a messenger of Allah. Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him. That is the straight path of Allah. وَرَسُولٌ إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلٌ أَنِّي قَدْ يَأْتُكُمْ بَآتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ أَنِّي أَخْلُقْ لَكُمْ نَطِّينِ بِقَيْءَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَأَنْفُخْ فِيهِ فَيَكُمْ وَطَيْرًا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وبرؤ الأكمة والأبر والأبرصة وحي الموت بإذن الله ونبيكم ما تأكلون وما تدخلون في بيوتكم إن في ذلك لآيات لكم كنتم مؤمنين ومصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة والإنجيل ولو حل لكم بعض الذي حرم عليكم وجئتكم بآيات من ربكم فاتقوا الله وأطيعون إن الله ربي وربكم فاعبدوه هذا صاد من الطريق هذا this is this is this who is this is who is عيسى ابن مريم عليه السلام who is the Mary the Virgin عليه السلام Mary was the first century Galilean, Galilean woman of Nazareth and the mother of Jesus, peace be upon both of them, according to the Gospel and the Quran. In Islam, Mary is called Maryam, السلام, the mother of Isa. She is often referred by honorific, يعني honorable, honorable lady. Title. Honorific title, like say the Tuna say is our lady. A related term of endearment is Siddiqa. Siddiqa is the one who is trustworthy, meaning she who confirms the truth and she who believes sincerely and completely. There's another title for Mary, Maryam alayhi salam, Qanita, Qanita, Abida Qanita 
which signifies both constant submission to God and absorption in prayer and invocation in Islam. And she's also called the Tahira, meaning one who has been purified, alayhi salam, and representing, uh, representing her status as the only woman not to be touched by the Satan, not to be touched by the Satan. And this came in the dua of her mother, alayhi salam, uh, Imra'at Imran, the, the, the woman of Imran. Who is Lady Mary, the Virgin? Peace be upon her. And this discussion happened between her mother when she was pregnant and her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What her mother said, when the wife of Imran, which is the mother of Mary, alayhi salam, said she was pregnant, she said, my Lord, indeed, I have pledged to you what is in my womb. And she was giving whatever he is in, is inside her womb to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's a male or female. Consecrated for your service. Consecrated for your service. So please accept this from me. That's what actually her wish. Okay. Indeed, Allah, you are the hearing and the knowing. But when she delivered huh, her baby, she said, my Lord, I have delivered a female. And the law was most knowing of what she delivered. And the male is not like the female. That's what she told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then she told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in her discussion or in her actually prayer to him, and they have named her Maryam, alayhi salam. And they seek refuge for her in you and for her dissidents. Descendants from the Satan want you to protect her descendants from the Satan. Okay. Was expelled uh, from heaven. So her Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted her with good acceptance and caused her to grow in Mary, to grow in a good manner and put her in the care of Zachariah. The career was relative to Mary, alayhi salam. Every time when she was in the house of Zachariah, every time whenever he entered upon her in the prayer chamber, what Zachariah was finding, was finding, he found with her provision. He asked her, he used to ask her, Mary, oh Mary, from where is this coming to you? You are in your room, nobody comes to you. I didn't, I didn't bring to you food, drink, uh, vegetable, uh, uh, fruits, and others. She said, It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who looks after me. Indeed, Allah provides for whom He wills without account. Indeed, Allah provides for whom he wills without account. This is Surah Al-Amran uh, 34 to 36. This is Mary, the description of Mary, the status of Mary, the chastity of Mary, and the piety of Mary. But who is the mother of Mary? Her name was not mentioned in the Holy Quran, but it's mentioned as the wife of Imran, Imrat Imran, or the woman of Imran, as the mother of Mary. But her name, in the Christian uh, theology is Saint Anne, and in Arabic, Hannah, 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 Anne, the mother of Mary, but Quran did not mention her name, mentioned just the mother of Mary in Surah Al Amran. What is the message of Jesus, the son of Mary? Peace be upon him. Do we believe it? Of course we believe in it. God sent Jesus, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, to Bani Israel, or to the lost sheep of Bani Israel, as been written, as a prophet and messenger of Allah, of God. And this message was based on the monotheism of God 
and the individuality of divinity and deity. This was the message of Jesus alayhi salam. And deity. Calling Bani Israel to worship God alone, not to worship anybody else. And asking them to believe that he is the servant of God. Jesus is the servant of God and the messenger of God, alayhi salam. And that he is the son of Mary, alayhi salam. So he is a human being and the messenger, peace be upon him. This was actually the concept of the message of Jesus, of uh, son of Mary, alayhi salam. And his message was complementing the message of Moses, alayhi salam. Then preparing the way for the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I can summarize his message in these eight points. He was sent by Allah as a messenger to the Israelites. He invited the Israelites to worship the one God. He came validating what was in the Torah which is a book of uh, from Moses. God gave him the Bible, actually, uh, and it is the guidance, direction, in, and in it is, and in it is the guidance, direction, and wisdom to the Israelites or Bani Israel. God gave him evidence of his spoken truth and supported him with the Holy Spirit, clarified to Israelites some of which they were differing and disagreeing. I was trying to give them clarity for them. And he made what was forbidden for them, for the Israelites, to be lawful for them. And he was paving the way for a messenger coming after him called Ahmad alayhi salatu wasalam, Sayyidina Muhammad. Number six, what is the relationship between the Jesus message and other prophets. All the prophets in Islam are individuals who were sent by Allah to various communities in order to serve as examples of ideal human behavior, role models, role models, role models, and to spread Allah's message on earth, all of them equal. Some prophets are categorized, categorized to be messengers. And they have a book, a message to deliver. Like the book of Quran, the book of the Bible, the book of Torah, the book of Zabur, and others. Okay, Book through which the angels were revealing this message to them. Okay. Most of them through intercession of an angel. Muslims believe that many, 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 many angels existed and were sent to humanity to save different communities. As being mentioned, not all of them have been mentioned in the Quran. Not all of them have been mentioned in the Quran. Quran said to let us to rest yani, uh, assured. He said, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ فَإِذَا جَاءَ رَسُولُهُمْ قُدْ يَبَنَاهُمْ بِالْقِسْطُ وَهُمْ لَدُمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, a messenger is sent to every people. And another ayah, we are not going to punish anybody before sending them a messenger to guide them, to teach them, and to save them. After that, we'll be able to make them accountable. A messenger is sent to every people. And when their message, the, 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 their messenger, comes, the fate of that people is decided. It is decided after the messenger come and after he spread his message with full justice. The fate of that people is decided with full justice. They are subjected to no wrong. No wrong will be done to them. So, and we are not going to punish anybody before sending to them a prophet or a messenger of Allah. Yes, we can follow. Can we follow the message of Jesus? Of course. We can follow it. 
there's more than 90% commonality between the message of Islam or that delivered by Muhammad and the message of Jesus, Abraham, and Moses and others, prophets. This proved to us the commonality of the source of lordhood, lordhood and divinity. One Lord, one God, one divinity, one deity. The unity of origin of knowledge, origin of power, origin of creation, the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. Point number eight, can we celebrate the birthday of Jesus on 25th of uh, December or 7th of uh, January? While in the West is 25th of December, in the East, the Orthodox Church and the Coptic Church in Egypt and the other place, the 7th of January, does not make any difference. The date for me is not the issue. It is the mission of Jesus' message that we need to advocate, not the date, okay? The teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, is coming from the same source of the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu and the other prophets of God. We should be celebrating such teachings on every hour and on every day of the year, because they came to save and guide humanity from Adam السلام, into Muhammad When does celebration becomes forbidden? Yes, يعني, uh, this big debate between different schools of thought in Islam, which a group allow the celebration and other do not allow the celebration. It only becomes not allowed or not preferred or forbidden if celebration becomes chaotic, hurly-burly, pandemonium, much ado, much ado, much ado, much ado, and the hubbub, and the hub 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 gathering. Yeah, and this kind of, uh, yeah, and uncontrolled, uncontrolled, uh, chaotic, uh, masses here and there in the, on the main roads and in the avenues and, and, and. And having free mixing, more than excessive mixing, excessive mixing between women and men, drinking in different places inside the celebration, smoking drugs and intoxicants and gambling. All this, when you find the thousands of people are there, celebrating sometime the birthday of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Mawlid or uh, the masses of Christmas in different area or even the birthday of some saints here and there, many, many thousands of people come and misbehave, misbehave and disrespect eh, the, uh, the prophet status or the saint or the sheikh and uh, uh, as well. So this is becoming uh, wrong and we should not allow it or will not accept it. And we should not touch it and go there. Point, uh, question number 10, actually, who are the prophets that met Muhammad Sallallahu when he was going for Mi'raj? To look about the unity of the message and its origin and uh, the unity of God and Lord. He met eight messages. In the first heaven, Adam السلام, In the second heaven, Jesus and uh, John the Baptist السلام, In the third heaven, uh, Joseph السلام, the son of uh, Ya'qub uh, In the fourth message, he met Idris السلام, In the fifth heaven, he met Aaron Harun السلام, the brother of Moses السلام. In the sixth heaven, he met Moses السلام, and in the seventh heaven, he met Ibrahim السلام. So he met all these prophets. That means that they are they are all coming from the same origin, having the same message, having the same deliverable to humanity from the time of Adam to the time of Muhammad Then he was discussing with them different issues for his ummah, for the and for his message. Then he became their imam to 
to lead the prayer and all those prophets were praying behind him. That means there's a unity of deity, of divinity, and of lordhood, and of message. Okay, and this is an absolute proof that they all came actually with the same message with monotheism. You can see the images on the right hand side which uh, the miracle of Moses السلام, when we used to stick and hit the sea uh, uh, to be saved from the tyranny of Pharaoh of Egypt and the army of the Pharaoh and Allah let the stick to pave the way for Moses and uh, uh, the Bani Israel to be saved with him. And then the top uh, photograph is, uh, is the big ship being created, the Ark of, of Noah being, uh, being, being built by Noah alayhi salam to save uh, uh, every human being and animals and birds and take them with him uh, to the new land after the flooding. Also, uh, in this journey, when he met, as I mentioned earlier, and pray became the imam to pray, and all, be, all, all the prophets prayed behind him, this is a strong indicator of the commonality, of the origin of their message, all of them, as I mentioned before. We should not celebrate their birthday annually on a certain day, but we should act and implement and celebrate its moral principles by the second, by the minutes, by the hours, every day through our life. From Adam alayhi salam, Abel Anbiya, the father of all of us, of, of the humanity, to Ibrahim, Abel Anbiya, the father of all prophets, then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, the last or the seed of all the prophets. Number 11, we came here, I came to the West here in 1977. Yani, 43 years and one month. When I came here as a young uh, qualified medical doctor, I found in the culture, the British culture, they, the manifestation of the celebration of Christmas was six, 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 six manifestation. First of all, Santa Claus or Father Christmas, which is, you know, that is, is, is the origin of this story happened uh, more than uh, nearly 1,750 years ago by some bold called uh, 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 Saint Nicholas and he was living, he was born between 260 and 280 AD and he was living in the uh, southern uh, west or southwest coast of what we call nowadays Turkey. And the original clothes, the color of the original clothes was brown, then it became green, then Coca-Cola made it uh, to become red, to be the color of Coca-Cola. Okay, this is one of the manifestations of the celebration of uh, Christmas or Jesus, peace be upon him, birthday. The second, they eat turkey. Okay. Third, they enjoy the snow because in, on 25th of December, it is heavily snowing. And even sometimes at that time, we could not be able to come out of our houses or flats or, or uh, hospitals because the streets would be full or covered by snow, heavy snow. Then the wine on the table, which is a story about the wine that actually in one of the uh, tradition that actually Isa Alaihissalam entered to a, a, a wedding was uh, uh, a poor family and they wanted to have wine, so they changed the water into wine. This is, this is Christian uh, uh, narration, not my own narration. That's why they have the red wine on the table as well. It's for my... Number five, it's just go to the church. Like today, tonight, on the night of 25th, everybody goes to the church actually to, to pray uh, for God subhanahu wa ta'ala and visiting the family as you know on the Christmas lunch or Christmas dinner as the family comes and visit the relatives and the visit actually the neighbors and buy the gifts buy all these kind of things to everyone. This is actually the sixth manifestation that I observed 
when I came here 43 years ago. Unfortunately, this year, as I speak, there's no celebration. There's no mass congregation inside the churches or there's no mass celebration in the main road because of COVID. Of course, everybody is scared of COVID. Uh, question number 11, how to celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus and any religious festivities, any religious festivities. In my own belief, I'm not a mufti, I'm not a religious scholar. I think every religious group have the right to celebrate the religious festivities the way they believe in it. It is their belief and their religion. It is their freedom, it is their choice, okay? But this, in my own view, should not contradict the principles of the religions. And you don't do something which is against the religion while you make the festivities, or you enjoy the festivities, or actually you celebrate the, uh, this kind of festivities. And you can create a new uh, character to make children happy. Like actually in Christianity, St. Nicholas uh, nearly, uh, 17 centuries ago, uh, created, son, uh, created the Father Christmas or uh, Santa Claus, okay? Why don't you create for your community something from the culture of the community to show the respect and to spread the dignity and the value and the variety of your religion to the children, okay? In the form of clowns, puppets, cartoon, characters and others who can bring joy and smiles to the faces of the little children and translate the moral value, translate the moral value of this religion into practical action in the community. I can see nowadays, this is uh, Aladdin uh, with his carpet and on the right hand side, uh, Sindibad and another young boy, uh, Shepherd and uh, uh, an old Indian man with, I'm not sure if Al-Adin or something else. You can create your own character to talk about the religion, to talk about your prophet, to talk about your messengers, talk about your saints, talk about your sheikh, talk about your imam, talk about your values, talk about your history, talk about all this actually and to teach the children that. In conclusion, after being talking to you for the last uh, nearly 30, 637 minutes. In conclusion, in conclusion, why I'm making this talk at the moment in the middle of the Christmas festivities? Why? Because we are living in a global community, inside a global community, surrounded by infected social climate, which is suffering from various social illnesses. We are living inside a balloon called the global community, which is infected by too many, by, by which actually in, 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 uh, surrounded by infected social climate, suffering from various social illnesses. What is the purpose of this? Too many purposes, seven or eight. First of all, this climate has been created to weaken the nations, the countries, the states, different ones. This is number one. To create, to, 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 to spread rumors, spread lies, and to create chaos. Number two, as we have seen it over the last 12 years or more. To promote for the emergency of what's what of the so-called, the so-called, the so-called, not true, they are fake the so-called new preachers or reformers who are changing the moral principles and values of the religion into new values that contradict such religious belief. And nowadays, we find those people who come to the media, and I'm talking about from the Muslim point of view, come to the media, to the platform of the television and others, they are talking nonsense, they're talking rubbish to try to create this kind of chaos 
and to change the principles, the moral principles of the deen, of the religion, into other principles. The rise of armed conflicts, many armed conflicts, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Go to Nigeria, go to Central African Republic, you go to uh, what is the other one? Well, South Sudan, you go to Congo, you go to Yemen, you go to Syria, you go to in, 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 in even Gaza and Palestine, you go to different countries, different countries, different countries as well, unfortunately. The rise of armed conflicts in the same country or between two different states. The recent one was between uh, Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia. Alhamdulillah, peace now is there. Dividing different countries and changing their geographical and regional maps, redrawing re the national maps, dividing the bigger countries into smaller cantons, moving communities from one country to another country, from one location to another location. Okay. changing the geography of the region as well. Fragmentation and dispersion of communities and even families. You find some of the fa Syrian families, some of them are actually inside Syria, some are in Turkey, some are in Jordan, some are in Europe. Unfortunately, same with the Yemeni, same with the Congolese and the other. Soon somebody attacked this. Same like what happened to the Azidi. In, in Iraq, unfortunately, at that time, by what so called Daesh, which will have no relationship with Daesh, and Daesh is just a terrorist organization. Uh, fragmentation and dispersion of communities and even families, the rising agony and suffering of people because of widespread of poverty, illnesses, ignorance, and deprivation. And these are some of the aims that the United Nations is trying to cover. Look at all these images in front of you. The one on the on, on my left hand side is a young girl, Syrian girl. What is she say, writing on the piece of paper? Save whatever left from the children of Syria after 11 years. The one in the middle is the flooding inside the Democratic Republic of Congo. The one in the far right, the woman fleeing from the atrocity and torture of the Azidi in Iraq, unfortunately, happened to them, raping their women, killing their men, and torturing them for years, unfortunately. And they claim that they are Muslims. It's not an act of Islam whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever. Feel sorry for all those people. So if you create a chaos, you will be forgetting about all those communities who are suffering. In conclusion, what happened? Why all these manifestations happening, the chaos, the rumors, the wicked uh, preachers and others, and the conflicts, this will allow others, without mentioning the names because we don't want to become politicians, others such as countries and the multinational companies to steal the natural resources of the oblivious and heedless nations, the poor people who do not know how to manage their countries, how to govern their countries, how to control the uh, corruption in their countries. Having, having that, which we see it clearly, clearly in Central African Republic, in Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, clearly, clearly, and different countries as well. While this is happening, we find some of the so-called scholars or so-called religious preachers forbid the permissible, which is halal, and permit the forbidden, according to the political whims of their political leaders, unfortunately. Their political leaders demanding the new fatwa to keep them safe in their own countries. This has been manifested recently in some countries where the religious authorities used to be banning the celebration of Muhammad's birthday, and now they are allowing the celebration of the Christmas 
uh, at the time. We will tell as social worker and humanitarian worker, those people that we will not allow your opinions or your desires or your passion to divide our communities, fragment and fragment our sites. We will not allow your divisive, divisive, divisive opinion to divide our communities and fragment our societies. Because, because, because we have lived together for hundreds of years on the same piece of land. Muslims, Christian, Azidi, Jews, others. And ye in peace, safety, tranquility, and we with different background, different cultural background, different ethnic background, different religious background, different value background, we were all of us defending the unity of our homeland. We are not going to allow you to divide us, to fragment our society and to cut our country in small pieces. We will forbid also the different and dividing opinions of yours fragmenting our societies and dispersing our family. This is the message for the so-called preachers who every day have a fatwa to suit the political status quo in their countries. But our message to the young people is different and we have to give them a message. As I mentioned earlier, have you seen uh, these images? No, these images? The images of the Azidi, the Congolese and the Syrian in the first one. The second group on the right hand side, the woman who was holding another woman and crying, they are for Yugor in China. The one next to it with the fire, the children around the fire in Gaza. And the one crossing the river is in the Rohingya people in Myanmar, going to Bangladesh or somewhere. And the one on the far left of me is Syrian displaced, internally displaced people inside Idlib and other places. Okay, this is the outcome of the organized chaos which is being done by such conflict happening or orchestrated conflict happening in different countries by different uh, terrorist groups or radical or armed groups. Our message to the, uh, to the young people is don't react emotionally don't react emotionally to dubious opinions and don't become fanatic supporting extreme opinions that narrows the broadly accommodating fatwa, which is religious opinion, or let you follow religious fanaticism, prejudice, bigotry, and intolerance. This was forbidden by the Prophet Muhammad a long time ago. I say it again to young people, do not react emotionally to dubious opinions and do not become fanatic supporting extreme opinions that narrow the broadly accommodating religious opinion fatwa or let you follow religious fan fanaticism, prejudice, bigotry, and intolerance that have for been forbidden by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi As once upon a time, Prophet Sallallahu found the two tribes in Medina, Al-Aws and Khadija quarrel or nearly fight or conflict between both of them. And he was very angry, extremely angry. He said, oh Muslims, oh Muslims, oh Muslims, Allah, 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 Allah. How on earth, how on earth, how on earth, you stand for the call of jahiliya, ignorance. And I am still amongst you. After God has guided you to Islam, I'm still here. And you fight one another as Aus and Khajr. And I honor you with it, with Islam, and remove jahiliya from you, ignorance. And cut off with it from you the matter of ignorance. And I save you with it from disbelief. And he rubbed it 
among you. So you go back to what you were. Infidels, no way, I will not allow it. And he was extremely angry when he saw the tribe of Aus and the tribe of Khazraj as trying to conflict with one another because somebody stirred the problem between both of them. And this has been narrated in At Tabarani, Sirat Ibn Hisham, and other books as well. And these images, you can see it, is the outcome of what has been organized inside this infected, invested, ill, uh, uh, the, the, uh, social climate that we're having. As I mentioned before, we're living in a global community surrounded by infected social climate, uh, which is suffering from various social illnesses. And this is the outcome of it. See the Azidi, the Congolese, the Syrian, the Uyghur, the Gazan, the Rohingya, the Syrian, the Kashmiri, the Yemeni, the Central African Republic, and others in Latin America and other places. So I thank you very much for being patient to listen to this uh, talk, to try to create a discussion about the different societies that we are living in and the different culture which is being created to divide us, which led us to come and live in countries having different culture to us. Somebody like me traveled 43 years ago for uh, uh, educational purposes, but I resided here in the West to find more peace and freedom in this area than some other places which they claim that they are more religious than we are. Religious practice is about safety, is about respect, is about honoring every citizen of the country, of the society, is about recognition of people's achievement, is about hand-holding to every citizen of the country, whether the citizen is black, white, Muslims or non-Muslims. This is, this is the real practice of the religion. What we want from you as a human being and an individual is how much you can contribute to develop humanity inside your community. And how much can you do to raise, to raise the awareness of justice among us, your community, among us, your society, and among us, your country. It's where you feel free and you're, where you feel safe for you, your children, your family, and your neighborhood. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. God bless you all. May Allah bless you. I'll see you, inshallah, before the end of the year in my final talk of the year, which is my account. I always, this is my third year to give you my account and what I have been doing over the last 12 months. And this year was absolutely different from the years before. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.